Okay. Then we'll call this meeting to order and do roll call. Okay. Uh, Styles here. Sims here. Sir Buchan, you're in for everybody today. Hey. <laughs> also present our uh, Coolidge Wall representative Jessica Brockman, Village Planner Denise Swinger. Okay, uh, and a review of the agenda. Do we have anything to add or to remove? Okay, then we will review the minutes of the last meeting. And I'll ask if there's any changes. So we're looking at page one. Any corrections? Mm -hmm. Page two. Three. Four. Excuse me, Miss. Um, on page two, I apologize. But I did notice that there was a discrepancy. Uh, it's in the first in the paragraph at the top of the page, or excuse me, the second paragraph that uh, and the second sentence there is a utility and vehicle ease uh, access running from Dayton Street to lot five and on to lots two and three lot two does not have um, an easement I will check the I'll check the minutes it depends on what the person actually said not whether or not what they said was correct so I'll go back and re-listen to it okay thank you Okay, I think we're at page five. Any corrections? Mm -hmm. Six. Seven. And then eight. Could we get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in. Do we need to do roll call or just all those in favor? No, just all those in favor. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And if there is a correction, it'll be literally a couple of numbers, so it's minor enough that it, it's right. okay. Okay. Okay, the next thing we have is communications. I think we have a, a the letter. A letter from Mr. Buster. I haven't had a time to read it all. Mm -hmm. uh, any other communications? all of that. Okay. And we have council report, Jerry. Uh, let's see. From council, um, the last th last few weeks, our council has been spending the majority time on the uh, um, Cresco um, uh, request to uh, purchase land from the village, uh, which uh, Council did approve, and uh, they approved uh, the village manager to um, negotiate with the prospective buyers and so forth. And as it relates to that, uh, two council members have visited the plan facility, and myself and Mary Ann McQueen plan on going Friday uh, to look at their facility. And uh, there was some, if I'm correct, some minor discussions on the glass farm. And I see we have something in the packet here as it relates to the glass farm. And that that actually was Christy <coughs> Buchan's request that that come back to Planning Commission. It had been previously, previously discussed with Council, and right. she had just noted that and thought it right. should come to Planning Commission as right. well. And I think that's it. I do want to make a little note on that uh, with the Cresco Labs and um, the urgency of their request with the state of Ohio. It might mean at some point that we have to have a special meeting of Planning Commission. So I just want to make you aware that when I don't know. And that that might be at this this month. I think their application has to be in by the thirtieth. Uh, so we might. Yeah, I don't we have to try to figure out how we do how we do that. Right. 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 But I, I but, but I'm not. The only thing I am sure of is the fact that uh, they have to have ownership of the land. Yeah. 
as one of the one of the stipulations, and then they submit their package uh, to the state. So I don't know uh, how we how we're going to play in that. <laughs> so. I mean, uh, as far as their uh, permitted use, um, there's, <clears throat> I've already reviewed that, and it's, right. it is an allowable use there. Right. Um, it'd have to come before planning commission, of course. Right. Um, but that will be something that will be coming up. Yeah, and I'm not sure if we, we if that's part of their uh, package or not, that they have to send it to the state. Uh, yeah, I know that they have to have, um, not only the land, but the, with the zoning approval for approval. it. In terms okay. of at least being able to use that, they understood that um, the state had understood that it can be, it can take a little bit longer for right. certain things to transpire. But just the general, like a letter from me or someone, right. yeah. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you, George. Okay. Now is the time in our meeting where we have citizens' comments. We're going to have. Um, opportunities under a couple items for people to comment specifically about them. But these would be general comments. So if anybody wants to comment, if you'll come up and if you'll state your name and then uh, address us. Anybody have general comments? <coughs> Doesn't look like it. Okay. Then okay. our first thing is um, a public hearing minor subdivision application. Denise, would you like to... Um, well, and before you start, we'll just need a motion to untable that. That's right. Meeting. We tabled it at the last... I move we untable. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, we have untabled it. Denise. Okay, well, at the last meeting, um, we went into some detail on the um, minor uh, subdivision request um, and there was some information that uh, <clears throat> was not in the packet that Planning Commission felt um, we needed to have which was um, from book 300 page 197 which to determine that the property was actually in its entirety owned by the, the applicant um, because there had been some references to a, a different um, section uh, which had been an old uh, parcel uh, for what the lot size was. Um, so in reviewing book 300 page 197 um, which is actually um, a description of Let's see where are we at. Or the yeah, it actually explains the easement, uh, easement itself, and then also explains um, the actual lot five being uh, plat book 26, page 17, 18, now known as plat cabinet 34, 110A, 110B. And I went to Green County Recorder's Office. And it is in the packet showing that cabinet 34, 110A, 110B is actually that original map of the replat, of that Dayton Street plat. So just to kind of give a little history re reference on this, Mr. David purchased the property lot five. Um, it was a, there's a duplex, it's in residential A, residential A um, grandfathered in his uh, right to use the duplex, but he could not add to its footprint or add any other um, accessory structures, dwelling units on that property. Um, so there was enough land um, to the south <coughs> of this lot five to actually create a second lot and both would uh, both meeting residential A's uh, requirements. Um, the staff has uh, viewed this as a uh, lot split, uh, a minor subdivision, creating one lot, uh, taking one lot and creating two. Um, there aren't any restrictions on um, on being able to subdivide that. Uh, there is um, a private road uh, access easement to get to the entire lot five 
and so that would still come into play for in this subdivision. Okay, do you have anything else? I think just taking taking it as it comes here with okay. questions. Do we have uh, questions from the commission at this point? Okay, then um, we'll go ahead and open a public hearing. I'm assuming that we have a, a few people who want to speak. Uh, so if you'll come up, state your name, and um, speak. Uh, my name is uh, Charles Buster. I reside at 759 Dayton Street. Um, in this particular case, I'm lot number five of the Dayton Street plant. Um, lot four. I'm lot four, not five. I'm yeah. lot four. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I'd like to state that I have no objection I, I, to, uh, to the original application's um, uh, position that the lot, that lot five, um, is his. I have no problem with that. My concern um, has always been with the density of the utilities within that 40-foot easement. Um, I would like to read, I don't think many of you had an opportunity to read um, <clears throat> the note that I, uh, or the talking paper I presented today. Um, I got it in here late and I apologize for that and I thank um, Judy for allowing me to present that this evening. So I'd like to read from that if I may. Um, let me say that. So again, Charlene uh, and I want to thank the Village Planning Commission for providing us with an opportunity to address the minor subdivision in our neighborhood. Over four weeks, uh, my wife and I brought several concerns to this commission for consideration regarding the approval of the minor subdivision of Lot 5 of the Dayton Street Plat, 745 Dayton Street. In that original talking paper, we concentrated on the 40-foot easement, utility, ingress, and egress easement, the density of the present and future utility laterals within that easement, and who is responsible for those lines if damaged. We even asked that, the impact, that an impact study of the infrastructure be performed to determine if any cross connections or health hazards might exist if this minor subdivision is allowed. In other words, how many utility lines, utility laterals with a 40 foot frontage are too many. We were directed by the members of this uh, planning commission to contact OOPS to locate the existing laterals. We did that. Uh, myself and Mr. David did that. Uh, we did that, but they don't identify sewer laterals. Oops, in Green County told us that uh, identifying the sewer lateral is the village's responsibility. So I called the village for assistance and was told that the village cannot identify sewer laterals. I was told to contact AC Services, a local plumbing house here in town. AC Services never serviced the sewer at 745 Dayton Street. So where are we? On 527, this is not in your, in your note, 527 I called Mrs. Bates looking for standards regarding the placement of the lines in an open trench and the distance between those lines, which is chapter 1046 and 47 of the sewer codes of the village because all those ordinances say that the village manager is the responsible authority. I did not receive a call back from her. Today, I spent most of the afternoon talking to regional planning down in Xenia, uh, Mr. Kent LeBlanc and Mr. Groves, asking them what those standards might be for utility lines, the standard utility lines. And they informed me that for a gas line, it has to, for only gas lines, it has to be a five foot horizontally. It has to be four, five foot of distance. For water only, again, five foot horizontal distance between lines. Sewer only, five foot um, horizontal distance. 
for water and sewer, 10 foot apart is the standard. And from a <coughs> vertical perspective, it's 18 inches. So in other words, the sewer line has to be at least 18 inches beneath the water line so that there's no cross contamination or cross connections. But it also must be within those guidelines. And these guidelines, they inform me, were from the Ohio EPA. And so um, that's, you know, that's what they said. None of our original concerns have been addressed uh, to us in writing. No impact study was performed to provide the village with a sufficient guarantee that the easement is adequate to handle present or future needs. Section 410C of Green County Regulations stated for, for one of the criteria for a lot split that the proposed subdivision be approved by Green County Health Department, Ohio EPA, or by Green County Sanitation Department, whichever is applicable. In a staff report dated uh, April 28th, 2017, under the findings, which is paragraph two, that the county, and I quote, that the county engineer indicated that he will accept this newly created lot without a need for a replant. Is the, my question is, is the county engineer aware of the issues of density, <coughs> liability, and health concerns within the easement that's been brought forth by the neighbors? At the May 8th meeting, I asked and, ans and was answered where the responsibility slash liability of the utility easements by members of the Planning Commission and the Village Solicitor assured me that the owner slash users of those utility laterals were responsible for the maintenance of that damage. I had not, <clears throat> when I first started this paragraph, I had not been um, aware of the minutes of last, of last month's meeting. This is incorrect. Paragraph 308C of Green County Regulations and Specifications states, if a break or leak occurs in a service line between the main and the curb, it is the responsibility of the county village to repair. The owner will be required to pay all costs of repairs to a service line on his property. A title search revealed the original owner of 745 Dayton Street received this easement from her father in 19, before 1973. I believe the intent of that original easement was to relieve his daughter of any financial burden associated with the gift of the property. If the minor subdivision is approved, I believe that the commission will be placing a specific financial hard hardship on me. Um, <clears throat> Section 410 of Green County Regulations addresses other criteria and safeguards before approving a lot split, before approving a lot split, such as requiring that a variance be obtained from the Board of Zoning Appeals, that the easement be no less than 50 feet wide, and that specific hardships be proven to exist at the variance hearing. Approving the division of this lot before it has been determined that the easement is capable of handling the utilities within the specific engineering and health guidelines seems to be a reverse order in which the decision should be made. It doesn't make sense for planning commission to allow this minor subdivision then have the county engineers, Ohio EPA, or Green County Health Department determine whether Mr. David can build on the lot because of density and health issues associated with that easement. This practice leaves one more non-conforming lot within the, village, within the village proper. The health and safety issues we have discussed are doubly important as the village moves toward or forward in the infill of, of uh, phase of their, of their new planning initiative. Now I asked Mr. LeBlanc what he might do if he were on planning 
on the village planning commission having limited resources i recognize that there are limited resources why the yellow springs does not offer the uh, the service of searching out the the service uh, the sewer line i understand that um, and i asked mr leblanc if he had those same um, if he had the same constraints that uh, that the village has what would he do what would you know if he were faced with these concerns and he said to me that he would ask the applicant to hire an engineer to map out the existing laterals and propose new laterals and submit that to the commission and uh, that's all i have okay, thank you um in terms of time do we <clears throat> are a number of you going to be speaking regarding this so perhaps at this point we'll limit comments maybe to four minutes uh so that any that want to speak can would you like to speak yeah next? thank you um <clears throat> my name is micah uh as i mentioned at the last meeting uh this was purchased on behalf of the hashima project foundation which is a nonprofit 501c3 uh, that's the outgrowth of my doctoral dissertation at antioch um it is to provide affordable housing for local residents that's why we'd like to split the lot um a lot of the contentions that mr busters raised i think have been uh, very amicable and flexible and um, told him at the last meeting and told you all that i would be happy to sign uh, any sort of contract saying that I would take care of any expenses that he once again raised. Um, so a lot of these concerns, while I view them as legitimate personal concerns for him, uh, are not um, concerns that I think in any way impact this. Now to complicate the issue, um, what I experienced after that meeting was, um, I believe her name is Mrs. Burles, who stood up uh, and uh, challenged um, basically that I own that land. Uh, we spoke for a couple of hours, and she um, continuously insisted that um, I did not own that land. And um, at first, she seemed to uh, indicate that she was representing Mr. Buster and indicating that I would be uh, sued if, if I tried to assert that. I contacted an attorney, I contacted uh, m and Title Company, um, which is run by a real estate, full-time real estate attorney, attorney whose uh, letter confirming that that all is my property is in there. Uh, basically, whatever the contention was, I tried to yield with it and meet it and uh, say, okay, well, I'll, I'll address those concerns. Oh, you thought we were going to be building a church or something there? No, 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 it's not that. Yeah, I understand why you'd be concerned with it. I, I kept trying to go with it and, and be very flexible. Mm -hmm. But the problem is, and I don't blame necessarily Mr. Buster for this, uh, but people uh, injected themselves into this conversation and started creating new issues where there were no issues, uh, challenging my ownership with this so that I had to contact an attorney and, and pay money for this. I've hired a, um, I've hired a surveyor already and um, my understanding uh, from having spoken with uh, people here and having spoken with um, my friend Alex, who does a lot of building in Yellow Springs, uh, who lives on Walnut Street, uh, is that uh, this sort of, these sort of challenges are very unusual. Um, the, the lot split meets the legal criteria. Um, the, the bar just keeps being moved whenever I, I meet it and say, okay, uh, somebody just moves it and says, well, now you got to prove you own something, you have documentation you own. Well, okay, guys, I know you're about to vote last time, but hold on, we don't have this page right here, so you can't vote. And everybody was kind of like, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and let's get on with this. Uh, and then, you know, I spent hours having to defend myself that, that I own something I, I have uh, documentation for. And there was no, and, and, and I hope she will apologize, because she, she told me on the phone she would apologize to me if proven wrong about that. I don't suspect she will, though. Um, it was uh, not a pleasant experience. Um, 
I simply want this lot split because it meets the legal criteria for splitting the lot. Uh, I try to be very flexible. I will continue to be very flexible. I will be, I harbor no ill will towards Mr. Buster. Um, however, a lot of his personal concerns are not um, legal concerns. Uh, we're a family to move into one of the existing units and have a teenage son with another car. Uh, that would be the same amount of traffic as somebody, you know, so uh, you, you can't sort of micromanage, um, well, I don't want there to be one more car on there, and I, I theoretically think that maybe that could uh, cause a pipe leak, and so that, I mean, this is just so theoretical, built on theoretical possibilities, um, and uh, I, I don't see these challenges being met with any, um, again, this, this all started because it was viewed as there was going to be some sort of religious organization building a religious place there. That's not the case. Um, in fact, this is a multi-faith organization that's it's a peace organization. It's, um, it's not one particular uh, religious group. Uh, and. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't see normal um, residences uh, encountering problems like this. And from the folks that I've talked to, uh, this is highly unusual. And um, Mike, yeah, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, anybody else want to speak? Members of the Planning Commission. I'm Laura Curlis, and I represent Carol Cobbs, the owner of Lot 3. There are a few legal issues that you do have to address. I've shared a letter with your village solicitor about these. The first one would be, does the application create a sixth lot in an existing minor subdivision, the Perry subdivision? This was a question Ms. Council Member Sims had, and he asked that at the last meeting and the minutes reflect on page two per the record, Sims received confirmation that division of lot five into two lots will create six lots in that plat. So under village ordinance 1226.11, this would be more than five lots in a minor sub, already existing minor subdivision. That's legal issue number one that your solicitor can advise you about. Legal and I, I should mm -hmm. stop you and say, we don't have any information that you're giving us new information right now. Well, Mr. Sims asked about it last. I mean, it was no, a known issue, and he did ask about it and was given that confirmation. I just wanted to let you know. It was in your minutes. Public roadway access for minor subdivision. The ordinances are actually in conflict on this point. Ms. Um, Swinger correctly points out that 1260.02E which is the general provision for subdivision and actually all land in the village. It says any lot created after the effective date shall have frontage on an improved public street or approved private street access easement equal to the minimum required lot width in the zoning district in which it is created. That is true. However, the more specific provisions in the zoning code include 1226.06A5, every lot shall abut on a street, quote unquote, and more pertinently, 1226.11A1, which applies specifically to minor subdivisions, it says, quote, the proposed subdivision is along an existing public road and involves no opening, widening, or extension of any street or road or public utilities. So you have a conflict in your ordinances between the general and the more specific ordinances. Again, your solicitor can advise you about that. Separate and adequate water and sewage connections. You have to determine whether adequate water and sewage connections exist for this property. That generally means a connection directly from a lot to a main. So that cannot happen on this particular lot. It's a landlocked lot. It has to happen through an easement, which the applicant does not, he does not own the fee simple. So on plat, the 1990 plat, it simply says there is an access and utility easement. It's very simple. There's no scope of the easement. There's nothing that says what the existing utilities are. And Ms. Ms. Cobb agrees with Mr. Buster that an, a, a study, a utility study needs to be done. But who needs to do that? Well, the applicant. The applicant is asking you to do something and it's the applicant's burden to prove that there is adequate room in this utility, in this easement for the utilities needed for a buildable, buildable lot. 
right now it's completely unknown. And the fourth issue is simply, this goes to the sufficiency and ad adequacy that you're required to find under your ordinance, is everything else that goes with an easement. And this is why many communities do not allow lot splits on easements, because of the burden it places on neighbors, usually one neighbor in particular. And there are many issues that need to be addressed. Now those can be addressed with an, agree an agreement, and that agreement can be of record between the parties to assure you that it's adequately addressing things like identification and placement of utilities so that Mr. Buster's utilities aren't negatively impacted by the placement of Mr. David's utilities. Mm -hmm. Identif identification um, as to what's going to happen during construction. Usually there's some sort of temporary construction easement or other agreement, because obviously that's going to impact Mrs. Cobb's and Mr. But Buster's and access. Your, your Liability and insurance, parking, maintenance is a big one, who's going to bear the cost, and so forth. So thank you. Those would be sufficiency and ad adequacy issues for you to determine. Thank, thank you. you very much. Excuse me. Even though I have a legal counsel here, and I probably should just sit down and shut up and let her do it, but I was I'm trying to stay calm, but I was completely upset about some things. And could you state your name, please? I'm sorry. Carol Cobb. Thank you. Owner of 759 Dayton Street. Um, first of all, it's obvious that this young man didn't know enough about Yellow Springs because we've always had wow. problems uh, as far as lots and land and the kind of concerns uh, that people have because of allowing a lot of things throughout the years and when things were done differently. And I'm sure you all are aware of a lot of them. Um, but as far as uh, Ms. Curlis, last time uh, talking on my behalf, I had asked her to because I am not knowledgeable about any of this. I just don't think it's right what is being done. But there are complications. This isn't just a matter of trying to uh, stop him. We were trying to find out the truth because we are family with the uh, person that owned that property and there were health concerns and other things that had gotten to the point where she wasn't even sure about a couple of things about the land. Um, my brother gave that land so my cousin could have a buffer. So we weren't sure whether she had gone and um, gotten that, um, not split, but done some things that protected her. So we weren't sure whether that other, uh, I think it was 0.25 maybe, was uh, part of the original packet. Um, so we were doing our due diligence, which I think we we're allowed to, in fact, I would think the title search ended up helping him because at least it proved it that, yeah, that was coupled into the other 2.5 uh, parts. So I, I resent, resent that. Um, and I don't know what he's talking about as far as some of the other things. I'm not even going to address them. Um, my concern is that, no, I, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want anything built there. I'm not going to lie um, because of the understanding I know my great aunt Betty had and what she had planned for us. And uh, just nobody saw this coming, particularly after what we had to go through, had to have the furniture on Dayton Street. I know one thing, I would be more aware of what goes down in this village anymore because a lot of things seem to be done that um, the regular citizen, the average citizen is not aware of and we need to be because a lot of things I think are just not right. So I just wanted him to understand stand is nobody was trying to go in the, through the back door or anything like that. We have a right to understand. You know, I've lived there for 16 years. My brothers lived there over 20. Um, I think we have <laughs> at least that right uh, to understand and to protect our interest. I think that's what intelligent people do. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? Okay, if there's nobody else that wants to speak, then we will close the public hearing portion. Um, comments from the commission? Denise, are there things you want to address? 
Well, where do I begin? <laughs> um, I normally, under, under a minor subdivision process, I don't even need to bring it to Planning Commission other than on the consent agenda. But as a courtesy to the family members that live there, I, I did it as though it was much more than that. So I do want to say that. I have, I have put many, many hours into this. Uh, I've, I've openly notified all the neighbors that border it. I've put it in the paper on two different occasions. There's been nothing done in, but through a back door. So I did want to clarify that. Um, a question that I have that um, Laura brought up about uh, creating the sixth lot. This is a replant, is it? A minor subdivision? What we're doing is a minor subdivision. What we're doing, what we're doing is a minor subdivision. subdivision. Okay. Can I, can I um, address this real quick with the question? Yeah, no. Well, I mean, okay. a, a replat is when property lines are moved and what properties you are looking at, the, there is, it remains the exact same after the property lines are moved or less lots. So in this case, there were five lots to begin with, and after the, the, the moving of the lines, five remained. But, it, but in that, it created lot three and four. Okay. That makes sense. And so, um, I, keep, I, I keep hearing re referring to it as the Dayton Street subdivision, mm -hmm. and it's Dayton Street Platt. Platt. Okay. Yeah. I wanted to clarify that, too. Um, Did that address lot six? I think that was the question. Yeah, I mean, the Dayton Street plot, it, all of lot five... Will become lot six. But it was a, it was a replot, it wasn't a subdivision. No, no one, I don't believe, excuse me, but uh, I... I if someone said a subdivision, I, I I did not hear that. But that's what that's uh, what I understood. Okay. About the question okay. centered around lot six, the creation it's not creating of lot six. If, if, if nineteen be, if nineteen ninety was a replant, yes. it wasn't subdivided. So we can do a minor subdivision. I can that's what because Laura was saying so it's, yeah, it doesn't matter if we make lot six, if it wasn't a sub, if that was not a subdivision. Which, based on the replat map, there was five lots before, mm -hmm. and we have five lots now. I understand, but I'm just saying that there will ultimately be a lot six, yes, yes, and not a track two. Mm -hmm. I mean, tracks that's, one and two is what the um, surveyor said is common uh, as you define a single person or entity owns. Um, the whole uh, property, like the adjoining properties, if you do not wish it to be sold independently or transferred independently, which was the case with us. So that's why that's designated track one and two, as opposed to any other way, because uh, this is what the surveyor indicated. It, 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 it really is just kind of a term that, you know, eventually, I mean, I have other um, uh, minor subdivisions that have been done where they call it track one, track two, track three, track four. And eventually though when it gets filed at Green County, then it gets the F nineteen number and it becomes it's a lot. It okay, Jerry possibly. possibly. Do you either yeah. you have questions? I have a lot of questions. <laughs> I I uh, was uh, you had so much information, Ms. Curlis, that I'm overwhelmed and, and can't process through all of that. Um, I agreed with Mr. Buster at last meeting that it seemed to be a, a horse before the cart situation of not knowing where the sewer goes before it gets replatted, subdivided, let me get the right terminology. But apparently our task is to look at the of the division of the property, and then it moves on to Greene County to do the, uh, the the sewer and water study. I agree with you. I think that doesn't make sense. It's like catch twenty two to 
not know that information, but if Mr. David is going to be bearing the burden of the cost um, of the study, then I think that's at least that's on his dime and not yours. I'm confused with the issues that Ms. Curlis brought forward. I don't know quite, you know, where legally we are supposed to go. Um, I don't know. <laughs> and, and so I find that to be somewhat of a dilemma to, uh, you know, move forward, stay where we are. Um, the, um, but the confusion on the quantity of lateral lines within the easement area is, is I think, um, a good concern to have. I think it's a very reasonable concern. Um, but apparently, I'm... I addressed that as a result of item five in... We, we need to not do back and forth yeah. because when, oh, I, when we sorry. do minutes, okay. I can't, yeah. I can't so hear. I and if you have something to say, you need to come up to the end and, and make it as brief as possible. I'm sorry. sorry. Um, I, I identify that as a... My, my, um, my talking paper was, was directed for item five, whether the easement portion. It's, I think that in the findings, in the Swinger's findings, it's more than just a checklist of yes, yes, yes. That there has to be a responsibility of whether that easement meets and will meet the future needs of that lot, uh, of that split. And that's what that was addressed to. And I apologize, I'm not talking to the no, <laughs> to one the of the things I do want to clarify um, is that it's actually, Mr. Buster, a 50-foot wide easement. I only own 40 foot of it. That 50 oh. foot was given to Mrs. Perry by her father. But so. it, as far as width goes, in the in the legal description of the of the right of access, it it's is a 50 foot wide that is correct to, and from the south line of mr david's property to dayton street correct okay. but it also says on lot on lot four it doesn't say on lot three lot three is miss cobb's 10 so 10 feet of that easement is on miss cobb's lot three and i might add that that probably five foot um, of that, Th those extra 10 feet are in a tree line, and mm -hmm. those trees are probably eight feet. Yeah, I'm not. I was diameter. just clarifying that that was what it says in there, 50 sure. foot, because you mentioned 40 foot. Correct. And, yeah. and I guess what I didn't conclude was that if you put all those numbers together of all those different lines that are going to be in there, mm -hmm. there's no room in that 40 foot for seven different lines. Jerry, do you have comments, questions? The only comment, well, I have a couple of comments from, uh, and I'll address our solicitor. Mm -hmm. The concerns that, uh, the new concerns that have been raised, mm -hmm. are, have we addressed those? She just gave me that. Or, okay, so these are, these are. I knew about the, if it was lot six. No, I'm talking about the additional concerns that were just presented today. I just got that letter. Okay. That's five. In, in light of that, are, are those concerns enough to keep us from being able to make a decision? I mean, that's up to you three. Well, no, I mean from a, the, just from, from what you, what you heard. Well, what were the, let's kind of, I mean, you need kind of go through some of that so we can. The minor subdivision issue. Mm -hmm. If the Dayton Street plat was not a subdivision, okay, it was a replat. Replat, then so that goes away. That yeah, that goes away. Okay. Do so that, that issue goes okay. away. Okay. Okay. Then um, what was the other one? Let's see. Um, the utility issues. That's something that happens later on when he's trying to build. So that Correct. is not under our no. purview no, to be making that right. decision. Because if, if, <laughs> if the county or whatever determines that 
you know, from a from a space standpoint, mm -hmm. he can't fit the next one in. He can't do it. Mm -hmm. okay. then you, you, right. But that's that is correct. Is his problem not not my problem mm -hmm. from from a planning? Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those. Catch yeah, that's it. That's where a you. I mean, I understand Mr. Buster saying we really should know. We really should have right. an impact study to know what should what can fit right. there before you grant that. But on the flip side of that, why would you have someone spend money on something if they don't even have the zoning approval for it yet? It's Correct. kind of one of those right. weird things. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so from from what I've heard so far. From a planning commission standpoint, the, all the requirements have been met. You just have to look at yeah the minor subdivisions. The, the minor, right. You think those have been met? If 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 we feel that those have been met, mm -hmm. then we as a uh, commission can approve that. Okay. The remaining items are going to fall on the yeah. landowner as to whether or not he will be able to build a second mm -hmm. structure she it, about that, that gets adequate water and sewage. And then the, the, this, we can't keep taking comments. That's yeah, not but no, but, but that's, you know. Yeah, I mean, you, got, you have to look at these eight criteria carefully. Right, right. You need to decide, decide if, if you can do it or not. Right. And that was in this, um, yes. the packet that we received right. from yes. the packet. Denise has them listed out in her. It's on the third page. Right. So Denise, do you have anything, any other instructions, information you want to share with us? Um, well, there was mention that the, that uh, this is a non-conforming lot, and I just wanted to clarify for the record that the property is not a non-conforming lot. It's a non-conforming use for the duplex and when uh, and in this lot split both properties meet the minimum requirements for residential a as far as they have more than 60 foot frontage uh, at the front of those properties remember that they have that off the right of access um, easement and they also have the lot uh, area um, uh, but so that has been that as well. Um, let's see. So, excuse me, the frontage you're, you're saying then is that line that faces the easement that accesses Dayton Street. On, on track one and the, two. The lot frontage uh -huh. is, is the front of, of the property for lot five. Okay, on the west. Track one, and the, yes, and track two. Both okay. of those meet that. They have that minimum lot frontage as a result of that right of access easement. That's, okay. that's how that happened for, That's how that's defined. Uh, that's how it happened for the previous uh, lot three and four as well. They had that. I mean, lot five granted them a right of access to that back property where they have their frontage. Okay. Um, I mean, otherwise, if they would have had to have frontage on Dayton Street back then, it was like, not happened. it was even, it was 60 or 75 feet for residential A. It was a lot, and it would have to have both of that. So it was that right of access easement that allows to their that. back lot, yes. Okay. Do we have any more questions for Denise? Any more discussion? No. Are we ready to make a, a decision? Mm -hmm. Can I read through the, again, I mean, I read it before I came, and it seemed to make sense. Um, yes, go ahead. Would someone like to make a motion? Do you, do you guys, I mean, I, I just sense you're, um, clearly there's been a lot presented. Do you want to go through each of those eight criteria? And weigh in on each of those eight criteria before you make a final pronouncement. I'm, I guess I don't feel for myself that that's necessary. Do you? I don't either. Okay. Either. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So, is someone ready to make a motion? I make a motion that we approve the uh, 
subdivision. Subdivi is, it, is it a subdivision? Okay. I make a minor motion subdivision that, application. That, propo that the proposed minor subdivision meets the requirements uh, and presented by staff. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, roll call. Mr. Buchan? Yes. Sims? Yes. Stiles? Yes. Okay, thank you. We appreciate everybody that came and your comments, and thank you. Okay, our next um, item of business is a conditional use application uh, for the operation of a mobile food truck. And Denise, do you want to talk about that before we... Are we having a public hearing on that too? Uh, yes. <laughs> the application um, was uh, given to me by Don Boyer and Miguel Espinoza. Um, they are the owners of uh, Mexico City Tacos, a.k.a. Miguel's Tacos, as it will be known. The um, uh, request is for a conditional use permit to allow a mobile food truck trailer, as I'm saying in this case, on the property located at 232 Xenia Avenue. Um, and I did want to point out that um, on the application it says 230 Xenia Avenue, um, but part of the building is 230, part of it's 232, um, but for the I, but the requirements in the zoning code state that I noticed things based on what the Green County um, auditor's property address is, and it's officially on that as 232. Okay, okay so just want to clarify that. Um, there is a, a, a large acreage of property. It has a large building known as the King's House. It has a couple of retail businesses in it. It also has some residential apartments upstairs. At the back of the property, and I've included some photos, is a uh, covered porch. To the right of that covered porch, on uh, Exhibit A, you'll see, um, and actually Exhibit B is probably better, is a um, shed that's there that will be removed, and that is where they intend to uh, park the um, food truck slice trailer. So both the uh uh, porch in the in the shed that's going to be removed, or is it no, no, just a the shed? They'll use that covered porch to have some seating. Okay, and it's a shed. Okay, gotcha. Um, they uh, have uh, just received their um, uh, operating license uh, approved by the Green County Health Department, um, and so um, if you have any questions, I've tried to answer as much as I can based on the application. Um, they're not going to be locating in a parking lot area, but actually on their property, so they won't be taking away any parking spaces. I don't actually know how many uh, uh, tables they plan to set up, so it's difficult for me to assess parking needs. Right. Um, okay. And the rest of you But is... Any questions? Okay, so if, if I'm reading this correctly, they do meet uh, the required seven or eight parking spaces. Well, I mean, Te it, it's kind of, yeah, there's, there's different do. lots owned by different right. people. I mean, I know, that sounds markets right there. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, and uh, you wouldn't want that, but I, I, I would expect that a lot of the foot traffic would be from existing people that are already coming down there to shop and are parking for uh, lots of other reasons. Okay. Okay. It's kind of in a bit of a hidden location. Um, you'd have to be actually in King Yard or parking in that parking lot that's actually owned. The parking lot directly where this is, um, in, in front of it, is owned by um, Don Beard. Don Beard, yeah. Any other questions? Um, and this is a public hearing, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, is the owner here that would like to speak before we do the public hearing? Good evening, Council. 
Council. Um, so I'm the owner of the trailer, as is my husband, Miguel. Um, you, your name? Don Boyer, and my husband, Miguel, as we know. So we are the owners of the trailer. Um, really don't have any additional comments to add. I, I believe we address all of the um, concerns and the requirements in our application. But we're happy to um, answer any questions or concerns that either the committee has or um, anyone in the audience. So about the seating, how many <coughs> seats are you anticipating? At this point, we don't even own any tables, so I would not anticipate more than two or three, either picnic tables or kind of like those little bistro patio tables. Okay. As far as uh, electric power, are you <coughs> hooking up to something at King's house or? Actually, there is an existing power line outlet that's right by the uh, overhang because that's where the tavern used to have their walk-in cooler plugged in. Mm -hmm. So it's already lined for a type of electricity type that we'll need. And, right. and it was for the cooler for who? For, for the tavern. For the tavern. Yeah, the, pri the previous owner of the tavern had their walk-in cooler there and there was a line, an electric line. So do you know who's, is it on the tavern's property right now? Or? No, it is on the property of the King's okay. House and the, the meter actually runs through okay. the King's House. Okay. And we've um, talked with the owners and the current occupants of um, that space, which is Asanda Imports, and they're happy to work with us to you know, determine how the bill is going to be paid. Okay. I don't know if this is relevant, but is this a year-round operation or just during warm weather? Or? The electric line has its own you have service. to say your name, I'm My sorry. My name is Brendan Comerford. Um, the electric line has its own service. I own the property. So the electric line is will not be under a sand of imports. It would no, be under... It's its own service. So you'd, you'd have to go to utilities and set that up. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, year-round. Right. Um, at this point, we really don't know. I think we're just going to see how business goes, mm -hmm. and then if you know if it's really slow in the winter, then it might behoove us to close. But at this point, we'll probably just try to see what makes the most sense financially. Mm -hmm. Other questions? We're done. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then why don't we go ahead and open the public hearing? Anybody who would like to speak, and if you will state your name and. Yeah, I'm Tom Gray. <clears throat> I'm Tom's Market, and uh, as y'all know, I'm probably the downtown parking lot for everybody as it is. Mm -hmm. um, every restaurant in town, every place that doesn't have any parking, people park in my lot. And I can't see how you can let somebody else open another food vending thing, not having any designated parking spaces for that, for that business. I mean, John Beard owns that one lot. I own the, I don't own the other lot. The, the lodge does. Uh, their rent is based on my sales. So anytime that parking is in that lot, that takes away from my sales, it takes away from their rent. And that's why Don's here tonight. And I'd just like to state, I think, you know, when you okay a new restaurant or, or somebody behind me that wants to have a kitchen in their house and serve breakfast, and I know that she, she had to go through all that with the parking thing. And I, I just I can't see how you can do that without some designated parking for that facility. So. Thank you. Anybody else? OK, if there are no other comments, then we will uh, close the public hearing portion. So I guess if the issue of parking, is there any parking that goes with this site? In previous, um, I, I, I can always speak to previous uh, food trucks, um, specifically the Yellow Springs Brewery, and we considered the parking lot area and, and the number of seating spaces within their brewery, but this is, doesn't even have any of that. Um, so I don't really know what, and maybe one of the owners can speak to the 
to the the parking lot that's owned by Don Beard, if it's specific to the Yield Trail Tavern, or was it intended for all of King's Yard, or does it? Would you want some maybe? So again, this is Brendan Conquer. Um, the uh, parking lot behind the Old Trail Tavern, uh, of course it was just sold a few months ago, um, was there are arrangements between um, uh, King's Yard and, and our property to use that parking lot for different um, uh, reasons. Um, we have a uh, signed contract for our for our, um, for our residential tenants, and then we just had a verbal agreement for our, the Asanda, which is the store there. So and wildflowers, are any? Wildflower, and wildflower, yeah. So there are no additional spaces for this, the food truck? The all the ones? Parking spaces. No more added? Parking spaces. There's no added parking spaces? No. So it's uh, still like the same parking lot, the expected parking lot behind the park property. So in the agreement, it's just that you can use it in, in general for your employees, or is it? Um, the verbal agreement was yes, that it could be used, but the written agreement, the contract we have, um, um, is is there's X number of there's there's two spots for the, the upstairs tenants that have no parking signs in them that mm -hmm. were supposed to be just for them. Mm -hmm. um, for the King's Yard and it's, um, pays, uh, like, uh, my understanding pays, um, like snow removal and those kinds of things and helps out with those kinds of things. So is this an issue then? I mean, it definitely could be an issue, um, but if we reevaluate this on an annual basis, we could see it. But I mean, I, I just don't know how to evaluate it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just I don't really know if people are going to drive from somewhere else specifically to go there, or if they're actually in town and they are see it and then, oh, uh, let's do this for lunch or dinner. Yeah. It's, it's I can appreciate Tom's concern because uh, I avoid going downtown Saturday and Sundays because I can't park in your parking lot. <laughs> and, you know, I want to run in and get groceries, and it's like, so I walk instead. But I, that was one uh, concern when I first read this uh, food truck is that we make our local eateries provide parking, uh, so they have to bear that burden. Um, I can see where the business could be very successful because there's such a demand uh, by our weekend um, visitors, uh, you know, for food service. But we're not playing with the same um, fairness that we do with our established restaurants mm -hmm. in that we require them to have parking, a certain amount of parking available. And it's he and but that is also based on seating. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So this is so, walking so, traffic. It's just yeah, difficult it, to assess. Um, and I don't know what's fair. I mean, so there is nothing that requires them at this point to have parking. Is that correct? It's something that we we address. Um, based on the number of tables, they should have some ability to have some parking. Um, she's saying a picnic table, so I don't. I have to go back to the code. I don't know if it's one space for every three people. I have to look at that. But um, do you have any? Do you have a possibility of any lo any locations downtown where you could have people park if they were coming to you? if you knew that they were going to be customers that were coming there specifically? Um, it's not something that I had given thought to, um, as it is not listed as a requirement in the conditional use application. So I, I don't have a good answer for that right now. Although I would say 
if having tables and outdoor seating would prevent us from parking there, then I would just not have outdoor seating there. Mm. Kind of like the uh, food truck at uh, Nippers gas station, there's no seating. So when I use visit that location, I you know find whatever seating's available in town, what benches are available. So I mean, if we make that as a stipulation as to the seating uh, equals so much parking, but then I'm sure the clients would like to have a place to sit down. <laughs> especially if there's a patio there. And I would think that that uh, food locker, that electrical thing might have been from the era when Winds was uh, renting um, that space. Or, yeah. Are uh, the other food um, truck, the one in Nippers parking lot, do they have any uh, parking spaces? So they don't. Mm -hmm. No, there's no designated parking spaces there. Okay. I mean, obviously, he has parking in his, but he doesn't have all. Yeah. It's, it's really just that walk-in well, truck. Yeah. I mean, there had been a, back there, wasn't there some little nut house or something like that? There was like a, there's thin food sort of snack um, the nut places house. before in that air, general area. Yeah, the nut house was behind the tavern, um, in the patio area, which is now a patio area. Oh. So, yes, I sympathize with the Tom's Market and the, their parking lot being used uh, by everybody so else. Stay at the lay, you can see my store, and they've taken from that patio, they put uh, mulch down from that patio right to my parking lot. You know, like, you don't see us right here, you know, from my parking lot. Well, the reason the mulch was put down was just to kind of cover it. Yeah, I was just trying to make it look prettier. That's <laughs> all. So it's just a little, yeah, it's not the nicest looking lot over there. Um, I do apologize, Tom, for not coming to you out of courtesy before. I didn't even think about it, honestly, the parking situation. Um, but you now. Come downtown on the weekend? But now that you, yeah, I mean, I'm there all the time, actually. But I mean, now that you brought it to my attention, um, it just it seems obvious that I should have thought about that first. But we were. Um, we just weren't even, we were just trying to get a conditional use permit for, for the property that we were intending to be on, not really thinking about um, your property per se. So, and I, I appreciate your concern. Also, I'm just really not sure what you can do to monitor and manage people parking in your lot, unfortunately. Uh, I thought about buying a couple of boots so I can boot these cars. I thought you were going to, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'd like to ask a question again as it related to the owners of the property in terms of the other little lot. Is that, I was trying to get a, a reference point. The, the, uh, <coughs> the lot by our King's Yard, that, that little parking lot? Oh, the parking lot. Yeah. Behind us. Okay, that's owned by Don Beard. Okay, this building that we're talking about are, are, is owned by you folks. Yes. Correct? Okay. And th did I understand you correctly to say that there was some type of an agreement of the use of the lot? contractual agreement for the people upstairs, but there was a verbal agreement. Unfortunately, it was with Kathy. So just the okay. So no, nothing has been discussed. We've discussed it, but there's no handshake. Kind of do. Yeah. Okay. So this discussion of having, you said you do have a written agreement for two spaces? Yes. For the residential tenants. Okay, for, for the residential tenants. Um, and is that something you can negotiate more spaces? Is there a cost or fee to that, I'm assuming? Yeah. Okay, now a question for you, Denise. Okay. 
if there is not going to be any seating, then the parking requirement does not come into play? Um, I have to go back to parking. Oh, okay. Okay. Six spaces plus one per employee and one per four seats. Say that again. Six spaces. Six spaces. If they have seating. If they have seating. No, 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 it no I was just no. saying six spaces plus one per employee and one per four seats. But it does get any non residential use in the B1. And then that's reduced by 25%. And, and the Central Business District. So that becomes six spaces. I believe they have two employees. And so the six spaces, that's the requirement on the owners of the property? Um, or the, for, the, the for, the, for the food truck. For the food truck. So it, so it does have to. Uh, I did put that in there. So it does require six spaces. Mm -hmm. Six, six space, let me see what I'm doing here. Yeah. I put that. <laughs> Uh, thank you. It's, uh, uh, where did I see it? Oh, yeah, I did put in there uh, parking requirements by use, carry out restaurant with no or limited seating for eating on premises. Where, where are you? I saw the last page of my report. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> so, adequate parking facilities, I just said in the central business district, in addition to those bike racks to meet the required seven or eight parking spaces required. So, at this point, it seems like this application doesn't is not showing that they have the spaces. That they have control of the spaces? You're, so yeah. you're saying they don't have to have control? Well, I, I'm just trying yeah. to understand, uh, is it something have they to, have to have, have legal specified to spaces or are we looking just within um, the downtown area that there are spaces? I was just analyzing it as looking downtown, no, thinking that, that the, the parking lot behind probably was there for the use of the King's Yard area, and there would be parking spaces in there. And then they also have bike racks on that, on that lot, so. Can anybody address, is it anyone here? Can you but address that? I kind that, of thought that was an excessive amount the parking of parking lots. Is there anyone who does know? Why do we address it? Don Beard on the yeah. Okay. Scene. Right. See, so that okay. that that to me is a is now a private lot, not a public lot. It always has been. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, um, <coughs> so I still think we we, we do have a, a, an issue with parking. Mm -hmm. You know, if. If I remember back to uh, the, the brewery, I think we counted the, the available parking spaces. Parking one, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, and that yeah. wasn't. Yeah, that was further away from there. What you know, the downtown area. Right. I don't know. If there's been an analysis for the food truck that um, like BP or yeah, BP uh, doesn't have six but, parking spots um, for um, his. Plus one or two. Yeah. In the code, you can modify parking requirements. There's, uh, it's 126402D. So it has some different requirements. Okay. Um, let's see. If there's convenient municipal. So shared parking by multiple uses where, the, where there will be a high proportion of multiple purpose visits, or uses have peak parking demands during different times of the day or days of the week and meeting the following requirements. Pedestrian connections shall be maintained between the uses. For separate lots, shared parking areas shall be adjacent to each other with pedestrian and vehicle vehicular connections maintained between the lots. Unless the multiple uses all are within a unified unified business center, office park, or industrial park, all under the same ownership, shared parking agreements shall be filed with the clerk of council after approval by the planning commission. 
or you can do convenient municipal convenient municipal off street parking okay. on street spaces are located adjacent to the subject property or expectation of walk in trade is reasonable due to sidewalk connections to adjacent residential neighborhoods or employment centers to allow for a parking space reduction the site design shall incorporate pedestrian connections to the site and on site pedestrian circulation provides safe and convenient access to the building entrance or where the applicant has provided a parking study which we don't have yeah i just um, I just, I just, I don't know how we're going to do that for the Central Business District. I think it would be really hard. Yeah. Um, can, I, can I just, because it's the Central Business District, it would seem, <coughs> and just stop me right away if I'm off kilter here, but that if adequate pedestrian access is provided from that front area where there's municipal on street parking. And then if adequate access is provided from that private rear parking lot um, sort of so that those are, are connected, you might be able to mitigate a couple of spaces. Then you add in bike parking as another mitigation. Um, you could then get a, a more workable number of parking spaces you'd actually have to require that might allow them the possibility of maybe a sign that goes up in that private lot that says temporary parking. 15 minutes only, that there are two spaces that designate that as an option for pickup delivery, restaurant pickup, that kind of option, um, only because they're located where they're located, <clears throat> which would keep them out of uh, the Tom's lot, which does not offer that option. It's, it's a shopping lot. Would that be a possibility? Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, the question is, would be a possibility for us to designate a couple of spots in the King's Yard parking lot for temporary parking? For like 15 minute or less parking? And I think that would be a question for the Beards. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can, yeah. But I mean, you could say, you could say part. Yeah, I mean, we could say that as a condition of use. I, mean, I didn't hear what get, if you can get If they can get that or someplace near adjacent or near that, then it would be approved based on that agreement. How many of these temporary spots would we need? Well, what I was trying to determine is, is looking at this map right mm -hmm. here. The, the uh, food truck would be parked here. It, and is there a clear path between the parking on Xenia Avenue in the food truck without going through uh, yeah. King's Yard. Yeah, it's this way. This so this if you're coming into the onto the property of, by Asanda, it, as you can see on that red line, you kind of would go, you'd go a little bit to, to the right and then go back, straight back mm -hmm. to that back area you, you wouldn't be able to walk on the left side of that from facing the street okay but you can come in the back through walnut street mm -hmm. okay and you can come and in you can access it through the front through the front from xenia avenue mm -hmm. okay so from an if we're using the definition of adequate parking taking in consideration just the public parking areas. Is that the, the calculation that you were making? When you, when you determine that six or eight would be... And I guess, can we clarify what are we talking about as public parking? Are we talking about the on street, the village lot? We're not talking right. about Tom's. No, I'm not talking about beards. Tom's or Beard's because to me, both okay. of those are private, private beard, yeah. unless they worked on an agreement, okay? To, to, to have adequate, you know, to have yeah. some space. And there's probably a, a three minute walk to the Tom's lot that would be accessible. That's true, the subway. There's an idea to throw out to the king's house is uh, adding parking at the rear end of your property but then you would have to talk with mr beard to be able to access it from his parking lot but 
just to throw out a spot where more parking could go. Um, if I may, I'd also add that there's street parking on Walnut and on Elm by Mills Lawn, mm -hmm. and we would be operating outside of school hours um, for the most part, except for um, Thursday and Friday afternoons. John Lewis, I'm senior trustee of 242 King Avenue. If you designate five parking areas to go along with this, what's going to happen when those five get full? Where are they going to park? They're going to park the towns. So it's not going to really matter if you put seating, it's going to be taken. And it's not going to be taken by people that shop at Tom's. These people shop all over town. So that's just the way I feel about it. We, our rent is based on Tom's sales. He's already told you that. The more he makes, the more we make, the more improvements we can make. That's just the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. So what is our pleasure? Any? Pardon me, close off. Okay. Hi, Christy Lewis. Um, and my, the only one thing I want to say is there's been a lot of conversation about parking. I don't know if you've seen the rear of this building. Uh, when we bought this building, it was in really bad shape. It needs a lot of work. There's a huge piece of land back there. We're in the center of town, and mm -hmm. it's not being used. Um, being able to utilize that space, being so close to town, seems to make a lot of sense. And being able to make it look nicer, because it is in the dead center of town, mm -hmm. uh, would not just benefit you know, somebody wanting to open the food truck or us owning the property, but everybody else around us, every store that's around us, it would just look nicer. Um, and I, I think that has nothing to do with the parking or the issues we're talking about, but it's another thing to consider, that it, it is making the town better in the long run. So. Thank you. Any other comments anybody wants to, to say? We're going to close the public hearing, please. Okay, we're closing the public hearing. Um, so I guess at this point, we what our choices are we can approve this. We could approve it with the condition of, of um, getting additional parking spaces, temporary spaces. Mm -hmm. That was your suggestion, one of them. <laughs> I don't see visitors paying attention to uh, this parking sign being limited 15 minutes. People are going to park where they want to park because that's the problem Mr. Gray has, is that they're parking there. It, it's tough. I, I don't know how to address this uh, food truck request and answer Mr. Gray's parking problems. It, it seems to add another problem to his overflowing parking issue, but the food truck as application uh, seems appropriate, mm -hmm. um, except that our code says that they've got to have so many parking spaces, and but then our legal counsel says that we can change that. I mean, we have multiple pages here in the code they about what's reduce, allowed. They can reduce it because of the fact that it is in the central business district. Okay. And and I. But you know, I just made the assumption that there's that parking lot, and I know that people use that parking lot to shop in King's Yard. I assumed that that would be where they probably park, and if they were wanting to make a direct line for the food truck. I mean, I, I, it's impossible for me to be able yeah. to. Gauge that. But our code has require parking requirements, right? Not for the food trucks. Well, it, it does for for a for an open type of counter service, which I stated in there, type of carry out restaurant. Right, with no or limited seating, requires yeah. six. But uh, it's in the central business district, so. 
that knocks it that down. can be reduced by 25 percent yeah right off the bat and then if you have provisions for bike racks it's kind of a planning commission's discretion to be able to reduce it down more i mean up to mm, I don't know. okay what would we like to do at this point Okay, I'm, I'm just trying to figure here. Um, being in the central business business district, we take away one one and a half spaces. So that gets us gets us down to four and a half. Okay, the the bike rack gives us an, how much more of a reduction? I don't think, I don't think it, it, it doesn't really stay. It just it can just be take, taken into consideration if there's high racks. Yeah. And we can take in consideration the municipal parking. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. The village owned. Mm -hmm. We can take it into consideration, but there's not a reduction. Yeah, it's factor. not a set reduction. Okay. Well, just to Chris's concern, to her point that folks don't tend to follow parking signs in any case, and that that might not be useful in this event, it might be worth considering whether a food truck is a destination. That is, am I going to go to Yellow Springs just to get a taco and then leave again immediately? Mm -hmm. So then the consideration becomes, you know, are they going to stop and sit for a, a long time, in which case the, the food truck is just ancillary. It's, they might pick up a sandwich here, there, or any other place, yet you don't want to disadvantage a restaurant which is paying rent right. to locate and provide the parking spaces. I mean, it kind of takes you in a circular direction, but if you have parking spaces with limited availability, you can only stop here for <clears throat> 15 minutes. You at least ensure rotating availability. And we also, the food truck on um, uh, Nippers Corner, there weren't, there weren't any parking restrictions associated with that because it meant that the, uh, the, the definition of municipal parking and, and for the, street. For which one? For the yeah. Nippers. Yeah, I mean, really, there isn't really anything that says that a food truck has to have parking in the requirements for mobile vending food truck section 1262.08 d1 there isn't anything okay okay but if you want to consider parking i did state in there that that the closest thing it relates to is the carry out restaurant with no or limited seating mm -hmm. but it's really not a carry out restaurant like what you would consider corner cone to be um in that you know it's got a lot of seating mm -hmm. and it also but has they have, they have parking truck, sort of it has a mm -hmm. in, in, yeah and it has parking very limited parking but um there's also a lot of foot traffic and people park on the street mm -hmm. which could so and i'm looking at that could be the same well it's the street there appears to be adequate street parking I need a one uh, I'm just visualizing it okay okay yeah, I think parking is the issue that is is <laughs> problem with this I'm sure, you know, I think it'd be great location. The food's probably wonderful. 
but the parking uh, is an issue in Yellow Springs. It is an issue. I guess I'm wondering, Jerry, the issue you raised about the food truck in the Nippers um, yeah. area. If if that was not a factor, don't we then need to be consistent in what our decision is? But I think Nipper has uh, um, quite a few parking spots, like in front of his station, between his station next to Bonadie's studio. There's probably three street parking. Are you talking about no, parking? no, Actually, on his okay. lot, on his lot. So I, I think he probably meets the criteria but of see, that's having. That's why I felt it met the criteria with this being next to the. I always thought, and I knew it's owned by Don, but I always thought it was like King Jordan parking area. I mean, people that are shop, shopping at King Jordan. I agree with down that. Down there, always would consider that the parking spaces for. And, it, and also, Planning Commission did give permission for Nipper to place not only two food trucks, but two booths that would be selling other things all at the same time, which effectively takes up every single parking Park space, space on his lot at right. that time. So okay. right. that, and that permission was given. And, and then also to that point, I would say if, if you're asking that folks provide some kind of parking by way of maybe a temporary, this is for food truck only, it's not their responsibility, I don't think, whether people do or do not follow yeah. the rules. I mean, they can't, can't police be placed it. on them. They <clears throat> simply have to provide some kind of option it, if that's what you want them to do. I don't, I don't know if the rest is relevant because no one in Yellow Springs follows rules, generally speaking. So, <laughs> so what would we like to do? Uh, we know that parking is an issue. Uh, we also you know these people have come with a have met the requirements for the permit or asking for conditional use. Mm. I can understand where uh, the King's Yard parking lot is. Uh, I make the same assumption it all fits with the King's Yard, even though there is a sale that has recently taken place. It's all together. Give my recommendation. So. Give your recommendation again. Yeah. Um, well, I gave my recommendation to Lisa. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think that people that are going to eat there are probably already down there. Would somebody like to make a motion? I make a motion that we uh, we approve as recommended by uh, when, uh as recommended by staff. Approval of the application the, the for application the mobile food truck. For the mobile food truck. On the property of King's House. Right, as recommended by staff. Okay. Is there a second? I will second. Roll call. It's Sims. Yes. Styles. Yes. Zerbukin. Yes. Hey. <coughs> You know, that being said, I think that, you know, it is something to be aware of um, with the people that are coming there. And I know that parking is an issue downtown. And I know that the village manager has talked about trying to find property down there where we can make more parking. And people don't really like it. But, yeah. um, I mean, it is, it is uh, a problem. A, it's a problem, but it's, it's one that the village is aware of. So. And you mentioned that this, it might be something that will come up um, in a year when we seek our reapproval, something yes. that we might want to consider yes. being prepared for. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Our uh, next item is the, uh, the text amendments. Can I ask a, qu a quick question before we go to text? Um, in terms of um, downtown parking, is that something? that comes before planning or is that a village council issue? Well, I mean, it's come before planning before. I and there have been some uh, parking studies that have been done, I think, that were generated by planning. But of course, mm. everything that has to, you know, go through uh, council, um, we just haven't done anything like that in a long time. Mm. Um, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just have a 
a concern, and you, you approved it as recommended by staff, and I have to go back and look at it again. Uh, Don Boyer had made the statement that if parking was a concern, they were happy to not provide any seating. That was not made that a was condition. Not, not that was part of it was right, a condition. I wonder if you want to reiterate that a statement was made earlier that if parking was a concern, she would not provide any seating. Parking has clearly been identified as a concern. And you might want to reiterate that in some form or fashion because I think that I probably would walk out and go, great, I'm in. I can do whatever I want to do. There were no conditions placed on it. So if, in fact, that your intention was we heard her earlier state she would not provide parking I think that is, or seating. I thought that was the intention. So do we need to? Well, no, I didn't, you know. You didn't? No, I. You didn't. So you'd be okay with Yeah, I approved it based upon. Staff. Uh, Denise's, uh, I mean, my motion was based upon. Denise's. What staff had done. Okay. And their recommendation did not speak in terms of parking. In terms so, of seating, right? Seating. Uh, you know, yeah. seating the parking. So, you know. To me, parking is, is 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 a village issue, and I think that's something that council I feel, I mean, probably I, I needs do, to take. I feel really bad for Tom. I, mean, yeah. I, I do too. Yeah, yeah, but, but, I mean, uh, but to me, that's something that council been, has to look at. There's other things there, like that right. little nut house was there. I mean, there had, it's not right. like this is the first time there's been a food operation on site. Mm -hmm. I, I would think to your question, Judy, that there's no condition. No conditions, right. right. Yeah. Okay, we need to move on to the text amendments. And is this a public hearing also? They are. Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So at the last meeting, we already approved 124803. Um, and then uh, it wasn't realized until after our meeting that the issue about 124803, which if you recall, it. Um, let me get specific to it. it. It talked about adding the language of pocket neighborhood developments into, <clears throat> you don't have it, so don't look for it. Okay. Okay. Um, in the spatial requirements where um, ta it's the table where it shows what the minimum lot area, what the minimum lot width is, <clears throat> we were adding a part in there where we were saying um, uh, a footnote and, and adding in pocket neighborhood developments. And I realized that we're really, we already have that elsewhere in the code. So there's no reason to change one more piece of text to have to take to council. So I, agree. I don't but know if there's no, any in agreement. Agree. Do we yeah. need to yeah. rescind that in any, in any? I'm sorry, so you're 1260.04? No, 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 12, the, one we passed last the one we passed last time, 124803. I talked to you about that yep. briefly, but do, is there any formal action needs to be taken for them to re take that off of the table and not? I don't. We just won't give it to. We just won't give yeah. it to council, and it yeah. just dies there. Yeah. Okay, that's okay with everyone because it's already elsewhere. Okay, yeah. so we move on. Okay, so twelve sixty oh four uses pretty um, self explanatory. Mm -hmm. uh, Adding. And are, I should ask, are we going to approve these one at a time or all of these? Yeah. Oh, one, one at a time. time. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I added plan unit developments in that because because that wasn't in there for principal uses per lot, and then a pocket neighborhood developments and. Um, <clears throat> plus the for the criteria number two, buildings are under single ownership in commercial and industrial developments and land <clears throat> is under single ownership and residential plan unit developments, PUDs, and pocket neighborhood developments, PNDs. It's one of those weird things where it's like the, it's like it's owned by the homeowners association, but it, but they go ahead and, and the person pays individually for the lot, yes. the, the property beneath this. I, do you, do you recall if they actually own that? They don't, they don't own it. It's like a condo. Or it's like a condo, yeah. Same. Yep. Same. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah. Okay, so we need to open the public hearing on this. Exactly. Okay, we're opening a public hearing. Any comments on uh, to amend Chapter 12, 6004, principal use per lot? 
Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments from the commission? Would someone like to make a motion? So moved. Accept Second. the amendments to 1260-04. Second. Roll call. Mr. Buchan. Yes. Sims. Yes. Stiles. Yes. Okay. 1260-08, specific requirements. Um, we pretty much, everything underlined we've already hashed through, except um, I put in uh, italicized the areas that we were still discussing at the last one. But um, I feel that we should go ahead and, and, and add that, that an existing single family dwelling or duplex structure will only count as one dwelling unit towards the minimum of four dwelling units. As noted in section B6, an existing accessory dwelling unit will not be allowed in a PND. The accessory dwelling unit may be converted. If there's already an accessory dwelling unit on that land, it may be converted to another use, such as a storage building or like an HOA community room. I would suggest then the addition of an existing ADU at that last sentence. The existing? Mm -hmm. The existing, yes, thank you. An existing ADU may be converted. Thank you. Um, under lot coverage, I added, um, because PND shall be located on one lot under the control of a homeowners association, should that should be a comma, <laughs> the developer and or the Greene County engineer shall determine the lot area for each individual dwelling unit, and these individual lot area measurements will be used to determine future accessory structures. We went around and around about that, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking since they have to do it anyway, that I might as well just go ahead and, sure. and, mm -hmm. and do that. Yard setbacks, pretty much we've already reviewed that. Um, <clears throat> frontage on the public street isn't required for individual lots, uh, blah, 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 required commons open space. Um, we've already gone through all of that. These have all been reviewed by all of you. Prior to that, E, F, G, H, I, and J. So if you had any other questions you have, about that. You have something that okay. fix it. On, okay, on, pay, on the next page. Number six, a level B site plan review is required for approval of the pocket neighborhood development <coughs> conditional use. Prior to submittal to, the, submittal to the planning commission, the level B site plan shall be reviewed by a designated village of Yellow Springs engineer who will provide a written report of findings for the planning commission. The engineer will be present at the conditional use hearing to answer any questions related to their findings. I, you know, the, as an example, the Mills Park Hotel, was a conditional use hearing, and as I believe Matt said, it was like there was one meeting of the Planning Commission. But, I mean, it's really difficult, I think, for a Planning Commission to really be able to decipher all of the detail that's necessary. And I think that it would be important if we had an engineer look at what this person is proposing to do, because you could very well, based on this, get, get someone who really doesn't have a lot of construction experience but is going to try to create a smaller like PND on the lot, and so we want to make sure that they that they're paying attention to stormwater runoff and 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 the parking that is there, and and I think that it's just important to have an engineer look at it. I think it's important for him to write a report. Just more information for you to be able to feel comfortable with approving it. Okay. Okay. We'll open the public hearing for. 1262.08. Any comments? We'll close the public hearing. Any comments from the commission? Okay. Do we have a motion? Uh, let's see. I move that we approve the amendments per to 1262.08. Condition of use requirements. I second it. Roll call. Styles? Yes. Jabukin? Yes. Sims? Yes. Okay. And then table 1264.02, parking requirements. Uh, that was, we, we, we pretty much agreed 1.5 mm -hmm. spaces per dwelling unit. <laughs> so we just didn't get to this in the voting. Okay. So we'll open the public hearing. Any comments? Okay. We'll close the public hearing. 
then I move approval to amend table 1264.02, parking requirements by residential, by use residential. Second. Okay, Sims? Yes. Mr. Buchan? Yes. Staff? Yes. Okay, amend chapter 1284.03, definitions. Um, we, it talks about cluster housing in here, which, um, that allows detached dwelling units to be grouped in such a way as to trade the open space surrounding individual structures for common open space. I mean, that is a common word. I mean, it's okay with me if we still keep it in there, but it is also pocket neighborhood development has kind of replaced that, yeah, it's that confusing. definition. All right. I don't think it was anywhere else in the show either, right? Uh, somewhere small. If it is, it's somewhere very small, like maybe, and it might even be in the planning section or something. Yeah. So we're removing that. Yes. Okay. And then also where we added the common open space, a perpetual open space area of land to benefit all residents of a pocket neighborhood development, PND, or planned unit development, PUD, which is unoccupied by building structures, storage or parking areas, streets, street right of, should be street right of ways? Instead streets of right of ways. Streets right of way. Uh, I don't know. Oh, it could be singular right of street right of ways. S street there are right streets and right of ways, two different things. Streets right of ways. Yeah, it was all, it was street right. Exterior setbacks, driveways, required yards, and utility easements, except for recreational structures, and which is outside of streams, wetlands, and their buffers, and which is generally for the purpose of active or passive recreation. Now, with this one, um, I don't know. Um, I think that we. I think that there has been. There is some talk in there about under the planning section about <coughs> open space areas for major subdivisions too. But I don't really. I, I, there might be. It might. There might be a little bit of that. Um, I, I think that there was something about. Um, giving some kind of uh, density credits or something when it related to like green features or so but this one is common open space mm -hmm. I think it just talks about open space okay. first yeah. I think it's okay it's okay it's if not we just, common open space yeah I would just keep it because um, definitely relates to plan unit developments and pocket neighborhood developments and often that's what's going to happen in those anyway. It's going to be a PUD probably for residential if you're talking about common. That was the case with Littlewood. It was the case with Thistle Creek. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're opening the public hearing on MN Chapter 1284.03 definitions. Oops. Okay. Did you have one more? Oh, yeah, you have one I'm more. Sorry. Dwelling pocket neighborhood development, a detached building designed as part of a group of dwelling units that are individually owned, trading individual open space for common open space, and for which each unit is occupied exclusively by one family. So that is the description of that that replaces the uh, cluster housing. Okay, we'll now open the public hearing. Any comments? Uh, my name is Tim Ryan. Um, I'm interested in the definition of dwelling and exactly, I mean, I, I just heard what you read, but mm -hmm. are there any square footage issues or construction um, issues? Okay, we don't, this is as for zoning purposes, so um, the, the in this it has to be, um, they can be single, how do we say that? Single family. And you're talking There's, about in the pocket neighbors. <clears throat> yes, pocket neighbors. In 1262.08, there are density requirements and that kind of stuff. We don't have any we don't have foot any, requirements. We don't have any minimums. But that will cover, yeah, kind well, of decide yeah. How, how big you can make them. The Ohio Building Code does have some requirements, but that's not done at the zoning level. That will be done at the next stage, which you would, after the zoning approval has been made, you go to Green County building regulations to okay. do the build, and there are some minimum requirements, but we don't have any. From the county? 
-hmm. but that follows Ohio Revised Code. Okay. And I, I can't tell you. It's like, you know, if you add a bathroom at, or a bedroom, it adds another, you have to have another 150 square feet. I'm not sure what that base amount is. Okay. But you don't have any <coughs> requirements for that? For the size of the dwelling. <coughs> but there yeah. are the requirements of the number of dwellings in the different. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. For a residential A, B, C, it all differs on how many you can okay. have. Fantastic. For a minimum, yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, we will close the public hearing. Um, do we have a motion to approve to uh, the amend Chapter 1284.03 definitions? So moved. Go ahead. That we amend Chapter 1284.03 definitions C through D. Second. Okay. Sims. Yes. Mr. Buchan. Yeah. Scott. Yes. Okay, our next one is to amend Chapter 1284.05, Definitions H, I, J, K. Uh, this only includes one uh, definition that was added, Homeowners Association, HOA, as it is also known as, an organization of homeowners of a particular subdivision, condominium, plan unit development, or pocket neighborhood development, whose purpose is to provide a common basis for preserving, maintaining, and enhancing their homes and properties. Okay, we're ready for the public hearing. We're opening the public hearing on this. Any comments? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. I'm going to go ahead and add condominium development. Okay. Um, and then I got a comma I'm going to add after preserving. Okay. Just those minor things there. Do we have a motion to approve with the changes Denise made? I move to approve section 1284.05 definitions H through K. Second. Mr. Buchan? Yes. Styles? Yes. Sims? Yes. Okay, we have one more. Amend Chapter 1284.07, Definitions OPQ. Uh, pocket neighborhood development definition was added. A type of planned community which consists of a clustering of smaller residences or dwelling units that are individually owned around a courtyard or common open space area and designed to promote a sense of community and neighborliness through an increased level of contact on a single lot under the control of a homeowners association or HOA. I should probably just say common open space instead of area. We're not we're defining. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Where did you see that? Common open space. And yeah. leave off the area. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Um, we'll open the public hearing. Any comment about this? We'll close the public hearing. Uh, do we have a motion to approve? Uh, shoot, I, I can't think. Uh, I make a motion that to approve amending chapter 1284.07 definitions O, P, and Q. I second it. Mr. Buchan. Yes. Sims? Yes. Yes. Okay, thank you. Now wow. we're on to old business. Okay, so I mean, <laughs> this has been a year coming out, you know, uh, let me say that this now has to go oh, before council. No, tell them before. <coughs> and then, you know, warn them. Oh, warning, warning council. Warn they want changes. Yeah. Yeah. So they know it's coming. Yeah. yeah. Well, they want yeah. changes. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> so, yeah, it's only taken us how many months? A year? <laughs> I think at the at the point where this goes to council, it's not obviously it's not going to be going to council at their next meeting coming up, but probably the one after that. Um, uh, probably the July meeting, hopefully sometime in July. Yeah. I think um, you know if anybody wants to be there, it would be great. You know, to help with that. Um, I do want to mention. Okay, so that's pretty much that. So. Okay. Okay, we are we ready to move on to our next yeah. item? Yeah. Um, old business, vote for the vice chair for the planning commission. Who was it? It was um, Susan and Rose. Rose have both been nominated. And I, I would like to actually, and it would, I think you had nominated me, Jerry. I'd like to withdraw my name and to put Rose's name forward. Okay. You can do that. Okay. Then I would like to nominate Rose Peltzel for uh, Vice Chair of Planning Commission. Isn't she? She's Wait, already, no, she's already nominated. nominated. She's, she's already been nominated. So we're bringing that back. So let's vote on it. 
So you actually have two nominations on the on the floor. You, you really need to vote on both those nominations. I, I you can't really withdraw your nomination because you don't get to yeah, choose. Yeah, it was moved in second, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Do, or would you want to wait till the next meeting when maybe more people are here? I agree. I think I we know. should table yeah, this until sure. the next Probably meeting. That, um, yeah. Rose right. isn't here. We didn't hear that she wasn't coming. That worries yeah. me. Yeah. Um, she did express interest in being. But that worries me. That. Well, it will okay. just worry me in terms okay. of, the, you know. So I'll go on for another part. <laughs> yeah, you know. Matt, 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 Matt will be there at the next <laughs> meeting. You're all going to be chair. Okay. He's, yeah. uh, he's chair, I know. Then we will put that on for the next meeting. Do we need to table it with a vote? Or do we just mm -hmm. put no. it to the next I meeting? Well, because we, no, no. we sure. didn't do it right anyway, so. So we, we have to get a full, full. Yeah, since there's two nominations on the floor right. anyway. Okay, so now then our next item is the noise issue update. Um, I talked with uh, Diane Chester. She hadn't heard anything back. Um, <coughs> and, um, I sent her the readings that were done by the police department. And um, there is, um, you know, evidence that, that it is, there have been readings at different <coughs> times of day that are above, some slightly, some more so. Um, and uh, I'm going to be meeting with uh, the new chief, Brian Carlson, tomorrow. Um, she, uh, Diane has uh, expressed an interest in being willing to go with him to, to look at where it might be more problematic. It doesn't seem to be really the brewery so much. Um, so uh, I've been in contact with the owner of uh, Millworks, one of the owners, and uh, they uh, are aware of the readings as well. So done the reading so I'm hoping tomorrow I can meet with Chief Carlson and we can uh, figure out uh, what the next step is and hopefully um, I think that I know that the brewery is already trying to make some uh, remediation attempts with uh, Ted is looking at that as well but if that's not actually where the source is then you know it's going to become necessary to have Brian and I maybe talk to the owners of the property and see if they can talk to their tenants. Thank you. That. Okay. It's got where we're at. Thank you for the update. Okay. Then the uh, comprehensive land use plan discussion of update process. It yeah. just is on hold okay. for a while until we yeah. get through some of this other stuff. Yeah. yeah. But so are we waiting for housing assessment? Because uh, we keep pushing now this. The property has off. a land use plan uh, discussion and update process is the overall thing. Correct. That, you know, but unfortunately we've been hit with this uh, Cresco uh, thing for the CBE, and we may have to we may have to look at more microscopically look at properties. And you know you have the glass farm that's going to be coming up. We might have to look at those individually. I mean, I definitely want to do the comprehensive land use plan and get it updated. I'm just trying to think where in this process we can do this. Okay. Or maybe uh, maybe something the planning commission is willing to do um, a second meeting on a month. Uh, that's only devoted to that, but. I think we should have everybody here at the table to talk about that possibility. Because um, we're just not getting to it in, in these <coughs> meetings, not with the amount of development that's been going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we have a new business item then, the glass farm report. Uh, what are we wanting to do with that tonight? <coughs> Anything or is it just for information at this point? I did read through it all. And there are some, you know, recommendations that make sense. I, th I thought since it was presented to council, uh, we should have at least have it as well, and um, be knowledgeable about what it says. Do we need to do anything else, or is it really just at this point for information? Was, I think it was information. Information. Right okay. Well, that's, I mean, that's how I view. It. It'll become. I'm sure that we're going to. It's going to come to us. It'll so it's good to us. have this to start okay. with. Yeah, I thought it was very nicely done, and my yeah. recommendations were reasonable. Yeah. I did call Mr. LeBlanc and ask him about the uh, recommendation of uh, running road to King Street. Um, uh, I called him, and he returned my call back in uh, May 5th. 
And I asked him about um, why they uh, thought of uh, no through street of Wright and Ridgecrest, that they removed that from their plan. And he was saying that um, they didn't want a, uh, a north-south straight through street because of the uh, uh, speed and, and sure. volume. Uh, however, that if curves are put in the road, then that changes it. Then you know, then it doesn't become such a drag strip right. like oh. King Street is now. People can drive very fast uh, on sections of it, and uh, so uh, what he was saying is that you know, if we you can still have the right right street to Ridgecrest Road. It's just that you divide up how the traffic will be running and, and maybe put in some curves and then that mitigates that direct through street. Mm -hmm. you, you're talking going from Ridgecrest all the way over to right? Yeah, that was yeah, on... I think it was right here. Yeah, on their... Um, it shows a little external access point. Is this is the one on. you're talking about, Chris, where he shows... Uh, no, he, no uh, it no, was uh, uh, earlier. Right. I'm sorry, I don't have it quickly. Uh, page eight. Eight, I don't have it. That was a seven. Hmm? Yes, page, page eight. I mean, I have an eight, but I don't have a... It no. doesn't have the picture. I'm finding it here either. Yes, I've yes, got yes, page I eight. I thought it was yeah. this. Showing it. Oh, yeah. That's his recommendation, uh, but there was a map of the right street to King uh, okay. Ridgecrest and, and it's Road. Co it's, it was color coded. Oh, there it is. Page nine. Okay. On page nine, map ten, he's got uh, right street continuing through to Ridgecrest, which was their original um, plan. plan. This, is, this is what's been in place. And he recommended uh, changing that. I don't see, see there's a right street oh, okay. here, I see and, there. Then, and then that's Ridgecrest, uh -huh. and it would go back through. Mm -hmm. um, so it's this area in here. Yeah, but it, it, has, to, it, um, it has to follow the actual right of way for that area and this line doesn't I don't think this line is really following that. It it may not, it may be, you know yeah. but the concept the is, concept is yes. right connecting Wright Street to Ridgecrest. Yeah. And <coughs> excuse me, the new recommendation was to to run a new road from King Street up to Ridgecrest and, and changing that configuration. Yeah. And uh, so when I called him to ask why uh, to change it, he was saying they didn't, they thought a through street of, uh, was not a good idea, but if you put twists and curves in it, then that reduces the uh, speed of traffic. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, here we go. I got to turn around. Okay. Anything else with the glass report? Oh, uh, and then agenda planning, you have like three items. Okay. Um, I know council has asked me where, when you come back with the short term rentals, people you know, have been saying things and uh, have sent, I got an email from someone saying, I hope I'm grandfathered in, blah, blah, blah. So uh, I told them that we really had other things that we were dealing with and we hope to get back with it in July. So I'm just letting you know we're going to come back around in July. I don't yeah. know exactly what we're going to end up wanting to do with that, but I think Matt, Matt and I together can come up with um, uh, an explanation of what council <coughs> did have an issue with and then try to see if there was some okay. Can massage it. Okay. And I think I'm going to be missing the July meeting. Because that would be July 10th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will not be here for that. Okay. I'll be here. Not so here. we'll need to make sure that Matt is, and if he's not, then we'll have to make it. Another. Are you going to be here? Would you be here? For I would be back the third Monday. I'll be on the first two. Okay. All right, and then. Um, 
text amendment regarding height of accessory structures. Um, that was just something that came up with um, BZA. Uh, and we can, again, we can hold that for later. It was something where they wanted um, to have their, their accessory structure a little higher than what's allowed in the code, but they weren't going to do an accessory dwelling. And the, the sense was from BCA, they were saying, well, as long as, you know, why would you just let it be up to 24 feet so that someone in the future could make an accessory dwelling if they so wanted it to, if they intend to do that. Um, it's something, again, we need to talk about, sure. but not right now. And then regarding the size of accessory structures to the primary, uh, I want to revisit that because right now uh, I had I had been taking the footprint of the house and then and then making the uh, size of the accessory structure based on that footprint. Sixty six. We increased it to sixty six percent. According to the definition, it doesn't say that. It says that it can be um, the. The, the amount of square feet on each floor mm -hmm. up mm -hmm. to you know so up to your maximum 800 square feet okay so but the mm -hmm. concern that I have this is something we maybe need to talk about is as mm -hmm. as there's a movement towards more tiny homes are we then allowing to have tiny homes but accessory structures that can be larger than them? Them. so yeah, I don't you know I don't really know so it's I mean, something we need to think about. Yeah, and that's for future as well. Okay. Okay. I think we're ready to adjourn. So move, we adjourn. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 aye.